My name is Phil Trombley and uh, I'm an intern architect. This is the truck box. This was my thesis project for my Masters of Architecture. And essentially I was interested in building something that could take me off grid out in the hinterland uh, in a sustainable and responsible way. Um, and then not be fixed to just being a camping trailer. I wanted something that I could use all year round. So multifunction was kind of priority number one. And then doing what I can with the budget I had. I was a student at the time, so uh, you know, <laughs> funds were a little tight. So basically, this is a five by eight cargo trailer that I converted to be an off-grid hunt camp, mobile office. Uh, it's my ice fishing shack in the winter, so I pull this on the lake in the winter and I ice fish out of it. Um, and it's also uh, designed in a way so everything tucks away and out of place, so I can still use it as a utility trailer. So that was kind of the the end result. Um, at the time when I was designing it and coming up with the idea, I kind of had uh, trouble explaining and uh, saying to people what exactly I was doing because I wasn't sure, right? And it kind of, as I started the project, things started to fall into place and that's what came to be is what it is today. Uh, but essentially the truck box is really just an idea and that's what really motivates me. The thing you see behind me is really just a physical construct. This is a prototype number one but the, the idea of what the truck box represents, that's what's really important. Uh, this is the trailer here. This is kind of set up in like storeway mode. I grew up in Northern Ontario, hunting, fishing, camping, uh, going out into the hinterland without really calling it overlanding or really giving it a label. It just became part of who I am, what I'm passionate about. And I became really passionate about the landscape that Northern Ontario is. And so Northern Ontario, 95% of Northern Ontario is crown public land. This is land that is governed and uh, uh, managed by the Ministry of Natural Resources, um, but it's also land that Canadian citizens can camp for free up to 21 days. And I really wanted to explore that and be able to uh, you know, take advantage of the activities I do and build something that can support those activities. And so essentially that's what governed this project. At the same time, I was doing my master's for architecture and so um, I started video documenting and posting on my YouTube channel about every step process I was doing uh, to build this trailer. And it kind of started hitting off and became a passion of mine to create videos and share content. And so I like to share my outdoor adventures and also just kind of my design build projects because uh, it's a way for me to communicate to a larger audience. And uh, the feedback that I'm getting is amazing. Uh, the support I get is incredible and the people I get to meet is what is the most rewarding thing. You know, I'm here at this event at Overland North. Uh, the guys reached out to me, you know, through my YouTube channel and invited me to be here as a storyteller to present my work. So this is awesome and uh, I'll be back every single year. So this is kind of the back of house. Uh, this is the millwork and I did all this with a skill saw. <laughs> so it's a little, uh, you know, I try to get as perfect as I can. Um, but there's some storage here, some cabinets, and then I'll explain more about this in a bit. And then I have a uh, my battery monitor, my Renogy inverter charger, the solar charge controller panel, and then my diesel heater panel. So behind the main panel, I left everything accessible so I can work on it uh, easily and uh, have everything. Uh, so if I need, ever need to troubleshoot or uh, take things apart, you know, I'm not having to pull everything out. So there's a 100 amp hour lithium battery by Canbat, great Canadian battery company, and they've been great supporters of my uh, of my work. And I was actually able to give away a battery this weekend, uh, which is really nice. I have a 3000 watt inverter, converter, so this also charges my battery. It's by Renogy. Uh, way overkill for this project, but I wanted something that is seamless. I wanted something that can automatically charge my battery without having to flick any switches or unplug anything, so it's just ease of mind and the convenience. I've got a five kilowatt diesel heater down below. Uh, and that's because this is a four season project. I use this in the winter. I needed some kind of heat source. 30 amp charge controller and then all the wiring and stuff I did myself. Um, I got a 180 watt solar panel on the roof and that's been plenty to keep this project alive off grid. And uh, I have no problem, you know, with uh, electricity uh, during my camping trips. Basically, I designed this thing so that everything can fold away so I can still use this as a utility trailer. So, and I was actually able to take advantage of that recently because my wife and I uh, finally, in this crazy market, bought a house. And so we were able to move furniture in this and uh, it was nice to have available. It's not, you know, the most efficient 
moving trailer, but hey, it does it. Uh, I have some fold down hooks for gear. You can never have enough hooks. This is sort of the bed up in the upright position. Um, and thinking about multifunction. So everything's on spring loaded gate latches to hold in place. Uh, when this folds down, it becomes the main sitting bench. And so when I'm ice fishing, these are what the catch covers are for. Uh, and I have two holes, I have sleeves that go down. And this becomes my ice fishing shack in the winter. Yeah. So this being the ice shack um, and thinking about this being the main bench, I had to design it uh, asymmetrical. So this uh, width here is comfortable to be a bench so I can use the wall as a backrest. It's really important that, um, you know, I didn't size things awkwardly. So I was always thinking about ergonomics. And then up here, I have a slight fold down table and this becomes a work surface. And then I actually presented my thesis from my trailer out in the bush. Uh, this is where I have my laptop set up, my Zoom calls and stuff. I have my cell phone booster going up on the roof and uh, there's some more storage here. I would like to add some shelving. I just haven't yet uh, go around to it. And so when I'm going out camping with my wife and the dog, uh, we need you know, a little bit more bed space. So this half also folds down and we got a full size queen bed and that's comfortable for both of us. Um, if it's just myself going out solo, I'll often just put the wider half down and then I have a twin size bed and then I have a bunch of leg room for storage and just moving around. Behind the surfaces here, I have Aroma Cedar Planks, which uh, I really appreciate uh, putting in. It costs a little bit more money, but the smell and the atmosphere that it creates is just really special. I got six LED puck lights, and then I have two inches of rigid insulation in the ceiling and the walls on the floor. And I really wanted to make sure that this thing was well insulated, so I have an inch and a half between the studs, and then I have an extra half inch over everything as a thermal break. Uh, because this is a steel frame trailer, I didn't want to lose all my heat through conduction by thermal bridging through the studs. As you can see, I have a window and a roof vent. That vent has a three action push and pull function, so I can either pull air out of the trailer or push air in. And that being with the window, the small space, I have no problem bringing in fresh air. Uh, and that's really important to make this space enjoyable. Is, is fresh air. You know, you don't want to, you don't want moisture and humidity, so you always got to keep air moving around. Um, on the door here, this is what is normally the, the kitchen setup. And it, again, everything kind of tucks away out of place. Um, I have a light bar here to make it a nice work surface at night. And then I also have power at the door uh, because eventually I will have an induction cooktop. Um, and in order to get power at the door, I had to come up with the flexible conduit design. So this here is where all the cables run through and it's protected with the plastic conduit. And when I close the door, it simply just coils and doesn't uh, get caught in anything. So I've got 31 inch uh, off-road wheels with uh, Alcoa rims that uh, match my pulling vehicle. So this is a redundant matching set to the truck. So if I am out in the wilderness and I have a tire blowout, I have a spare that can either work on the truck or the trailer. And redundancy is key, especially when you're going out in the wilderness and you have, you know, you don't have any cell service, you need to problem solve, you want to have redundancy set up just in case. Um, the fenders were custom fabricated and are really heavy duty. I built them so I can step on and use to access the roof. I have absolutely no problem jumping on these. Like these things are really heavy duty. They're part of the trailer and um, they serve more functions than just being, you know, a fender to protect the dirt. Um, I really wanted them to be utility and I'm always thinking about how a surface can be used uh, to provide, uh, you know, assistance to something else. And then basically the last thing is I have a storage box on the tongue here and uh, that's where the fuel tank is. And then I have the fuel filter and fuel pump for the diesel heater. Uh, you know, outside located in this box. So it's again, easily accessible if I need to work on it. And it's out of sight, out of mind. Uh, a lot of people complain about the pumps ticking, and being really annoying. So I wanted to make sure that I have this outside, out of the trailer. I don't hear it, it doesn't bother me, uh, but yet it's so easily accessible. Okay, 
Okay, so the last addition to the trailer and something I actually haven't shown on my channel yet. Uh, and if you're interested in watching anything about this trailer and how I built it, I have full built down brake lights on my channel. Just my name, Joel Tromblay, on YouTube. And this is the truck box. And if you have any questions or any comments, uh, you know, feel free to reach out. I, I have no problem I, you know, helping people out. So the last thing I added to the trailer that I installed this to four days ago uh, is a 270 degree awning. Uh, this is the Overland Systems uh, 270 degree awning and I got this through James at Off Road Rehab. What a gentleman to deal with, great guy, and I, I, I can't recommend enough if uh, you're looking for something like this or anything to outfit your rig, uh, get a hold of James, he'll, he'll hook you up no problem. And this thing takes 30 seconds to set up, it's unbelievable, and it allows me to triple my square footage. It allows me to have uh, triple square footage of usable space. Eventually I'm going to have walls set up and you know that's the great thing about this is just you know you're opening it up and you're allowing yourself to have uh, more options you know how you set up camp is it's never going to be the same uh you know like a different site what i really like about this project is how it's able to relate to the environment and the activity that it finds itself in and doing um and that's kind of the point of being functional is that there's never a right way or a wrong way to set this up uh, and it just allows me a ton of options once I get to camp. Um, you know, I kind of get the lay of the land and then I can just kind of go from there. Um, so yeah, thanks for uh, stopping by the Trunk Box. And uh, yeah, if you have any comments or questions, uh, feel free to reach out. And uh, thank you for coming here and having me today.